high. One of the crucial parts in physics, one of the crucial terms in physics is just energy. Physics is all about the understanding of matter and energy. Now we have so many different types of energy. So if you start from chemical energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, uh, nuclear energy, thermal energy, sound energy, whatever, you have so many different types of energy. So remember, if, if you talk about the entire universe, the total energy of the universe is constant. I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm telling that there is no creation or you cannot create it or there is no destroy as well. So that you cannot create or destroy any amount of energy in the universe. But I'm telling you the total energy, whatever we have at present, is just conserved or constant. So this is what law of conservation of energy says. You can never, never, never create energy. You can never, never destroy energy. But what you can do is at least is you can convert energy from one state to another state. For example, I have the mechanical energy. So I can just make I convert mechanical energy into heat energy. I can convert mechanical energy into light energy. So I can convert chemical energy into light energy. So there are so many different forms and you can just convert one form to another form, but you can never, never create or never, never destroy any sort of energy. So that's what law of conservation of energy says. So if I talk particularly about mechanical energy, what I'm telling you is, it's just a total or say a combination of kinetic energy and the potential energy. So kinetic energy you can just represent in terms of velocity, it's energy of the motion, half m square, and potential energy, if we're talking about the gravitational potential energy, it's just mgh. Yam is a mass of the body, g is a gravitational acceleration, height is a height. So more and more gravitational potential energy you have when, when, when you have more and more height. So you have to do some work to bring certain body to the certain point from one point. If, if, the, if you need you know, to get it to the greater height, you need to do more and more work. So whatever the work you do is going to be exactly stored as the potential energy of the system. And that's what your gravitational potential energy, yamji hatch. So what law of conservation of mechanical energy says is, of course you know that it cannot create or cannot destroy, but you can convert from one form to another form. So you've got uh, two forms, in kinetic energy, potential energy. Totally I'm telling you it's a mechanical energy. So what law of conservation of mechanical energy says is the total mechanical energy of an isolated system remains constant. It does never, never change. Remember, this will happen only when the force involved in the system is conservative. If it is a non-conservative case, the total mechanical energy will not be remain constant. But I'm talking about the total energy of the universe. It will, it will always be a constant. So now, you know that but you know, the mechanical energy is just some of the kinetic energy and potential energy. So this is just mechanical energy. So how can I just say that the total mechanical energy of the system is always a constant, it is independent of the time, and it doesn't change with the time? How can I just make you to believe that this is just a constant? If I just talk about a free fall, please. So before that, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna just throw one ball from certain height to another greater height, maybe from here to here. So just when I just about to, uh, you know, throw it up, the velocity is really maximum, right? It's a, it's a mass maximum. So as it goes up and up and up, what happens is the velocity keeps decreasing, the speed keeps decreasing. So kinetic energy is just half your square. So kinetic energy is just half young V square. And potential energy, this is the gravitational potential energy, is just young G H. So kinetic energy is directly proportional to speed of the body. And potential energy is directly proportional to the height. If I have go for the greater height, greater potential energy, because I need to do more and more work. So however, so when you know, just at the initial stage, the body will be having the greater speed. And as it goes up and up and up, what happens is, the speed keeps decreasing and at a certain height the speed becomes zero because at a certain point it stops it won't go away from the earth you know it will stop some why at the point the velocity is zero kinetic energy should be zero so kinetic energy keeps decreasing as it goes up right at the maximum point the kinetic energy becomes zero because speed becomes zero at the same time the potential energy keeps increasing 
in the initial stage, height is zero, ground level, and no height, no potential energy, because potential energy is the hatch. And when it goes to the certain height, you know, height keeps increasing. When there is an increase in height, potential energy also increases. So one side kinetic energy decreases because speed decreases when the body is going up. Another side potential energy increases because height increases. So that's how you go. But however, I'm telling you the total mechanical energy, there is nothing but kinetic energy and potential energy always becomes constant. It doesn't change with the time. So the sum, so whatever the total kinetic and potential energy you have, we call it mechanical energy, it will never, never change. Only when the force is conservative. Otherwise, there will be some loss of energy. Maybe in terms of some friction, maybe in terms of some resistance, whatever. So whatever the total mechanical energy, uh, you, 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 you will have some loss of it. Maybe in terms of some other form of energy. But however, the total energy of the isolated system, whole universe, becomes constant. It's not a problem. Now, I'm going to prove this truth. So whatever I told you may somehow believe, or, but I'm going to make you to believe it by some mathematics here. Uh, just let me have one body which is going to be dropped from the certain height. Let me say the point is I, and the body is going to fall down. This is a just down. Let me say the point is C. Okay, height is just hatch. That is just height of the uh, pop now I've got here. And the body of mass m is just stopped at the point A. I am very sure that at the point A, the speed of the body is zero because I'm just going to drop it. I'm just not going to give any push or pull. I'm just going to drop it. And at the point A, the speed becomes zero. Let me consider an intermediate path, maybe somewhere here. It's my choice. It could be anywhere. Between with the distance x from the point A, let me say this is just by. So the point is being an intermediate path in between it and psi. Actually, it's a distance from the A to by, not in my choice. So this is x. And I'm very sure that this is just h minus x, because h is a height here. Now, I have to prove that if the force involved in the system is just a conservative, I'm telling you, conservative force is just, you know, you can say that the force is conservative, and the work done by the, that force is independent, only depends on the initial and final position. So when then you can say that force is conservative. However, in this case, the force is conservative, the gravitational force is conservative, and at the different points, it, it, it doesn't have to be on it A, B, C, anywhere in the intermediate part. It could be anywhere, anytime. The total energy is just a constant. It doesn't change. That I have to prove now. Oh, and for that, for that, what I'm going to do is at A, I'm going to prove the total energy is some amount which is independent of the time, which it doesn't change with the time. At the B also, the same amount should exist, and as well as at the C, that's what I'm going to do. It. Now, at A, the kinetic energy is just half yum v squared. The speed is zero because still you're just going to drop it point. Right? So zero squared, so just that is a zero. So kinetic energy at the point I is zero. Potential energy is just yang g h noise. So yang g gravitational potential energy and times the height is h when the body is to be dropped at I is just yang g h. So total mechanical energy is just sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. That is just zero plus yang g h and not yang g h. So let me say equation number one. So I just proved that the total energy of the points A is just yang g h, which is independent of time, which is just a constant because height remains constant. Now my business is to make the same thing, to prove the same thing at the point B also. It's my choice, you could choose anywhere point, intermediate point. So at B, so this is just at A, this is at B, the kinetic energy is just half Young velocity at the point B, that is V B square. I know the trigonometric equation V square is equal to U square plus 2A. Yes, this is the trigonometric equation. For this point from the A, the displacement is X. Acceleration is due to gravity, so I've got G here. 
and times two plus initial speed when the body is to start at the point I is to zero. So I've got zero here, this is just V squared. At the point V I'm calculating because the axis is taken from A to B. So I have to consider the point of velocity at the point B, that is just V V squared. So this is just kinetic energy at the point B is just half young. We be square another substitute from this that is 2g x. I lose my 2 here and young g x is over 9. Potential energy at the same point B. Potential energy at this point B is equal to young g. The height is just at minus x because body is at for the point B. So height is going to be h minus x. But my energy is to find what is the total energy at the point head B. So total energy is equal to sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy that is equal to kinetic energy is just yum gx plus potential energy is yum g h minus x. x yum g minus x. So I lose my yum g x here and I left with the total energy is equal to yum g h. So equation number two. I just I'm happy for the some time. Because at the point B also, the total energy is just yang h and the same amount, whatever I've got at the point A, that is yang h it's nice. The one, one, one task is reminding you. At the final point C, also the total energy should be the same. So now at C, the kinetic energy is just half yang V C square. Again at the point C, the you know, speed square is equal to initial speed is just zero plus two g. The displacement is nothing but the height, that is height. So I'm gonna substitute for Vc square here. The kinetic energy at the point C is equal to half young. Vc square is just nothing but two g h. So I lose my two here, young g h. This is just the kinetic energy. But at the same point, the C, the potential energy is equal to yang g times the height is zero because the point C exists in the ground. So there is no height difference. There is zero. So potential energy becomes zero. And total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to zero plus yang g h that is equal to yang g h equation number three. Now I gotta tell you something. So far, I made it to believe that the total mechanical energy is constant everywhere, intermediate part. And this time, in terms of equations also, I could say the same. The total mechanical energy of A, B, C is a constant. There is some amount, there is mgh, because height is a constant for this particular case. G, there is no problem with G, and as well as for Yang, this not, the terms are going to be constant, obvious. So, yam g h is amount, total amount of mechanical energy which remains constant. There is no change in the mechanical energy with respect to time. So, that's what all about. So, in equation 1, 2, 3, represent the total mechanical energy which is a constant. That is amount yam g h. So, I can say that the total mechanical energy is conserved there is no loss of energy so the total mechanical energy is conserved in this case so that's what about the law of conservation of mechanical energy in the case of the free fall motion so remember remember all these things i can just discuss only when the force involved in the system is conservative suppose there is no conservative force, for example no conservative force what happens is the total mechanical energy will not become constant it might change I, if I want to do the experiment and prove the same thing, I should completely eliminate the air, right? Just because there should not be any air resistance because the air resistive force is just a not conservative force and the total mechanical energy will dissipate in some other form. So the total mechanical energy may not be same at all the parts. So I should be having a complete involvement of the conservative force. That's what I'm going to tell you. However, as I told you, if I just throw one ball from a certain point to another high point, what happens is the kinetic energy keeps decreasing because velocity keeps decreasing. 
And as this, at the same time, the potential energy keeps increasing because the height keeps increasing. However, the total mechanical energy, kinetic energy may decrease, potential energy at the same time increases, so that the total mechanical energy, the total thumb, will become constant. There is no change in total mechanical energy. And when it's a case of the falling off, at the maximum point, the kinetic energy becomes zero because speed becomes zero. And you will have a maximum potential energy because height becomes maximum. However, the kinetic total mechanical energy becomes constant. And when it comes down, what happens is that velocity or speed keeps increasing. And kinetic energy has to be increased because kinetic energy is directly proportional to speed. So at every point when it keeps uh, you know, coming down, the speed keeps increasing. And kinetic energy keeps increasing at the same time the height keeps decreasing right and when it comes down so when height keeps decreasing the potential energy decreases so once the kinetic energy increases another side potential energy decreases however the total mechanical energy of the system remains constant so this is all about the law of conservation of mechanical energy and i discuss about a very particular case that is just for free fall motion so thanks for watching this video catch you next time